You're listening to Best Forevers, a podcast for kindred spirits, a podcast that encourages you to love more on your friends and to further consider the issues that plague friendships. I'm Elisa Lucas, and I'm overwhelmed, friends. <laughs> I mean, honestly, there's so much to do. There aren't that many hours in a day, and I'm sure many of you feel that way. It's like your to-do list is so long, it becomes your to-don't list, and then you become anxious because you're not getting anything done on your list, and if you're like me, my anxiety makes it difficult for me to focus and concentrate, and I forget even the simplest things, like I can't even remember what I did two days ago. That's where being overwhelmed leads to anxiety, and then when I can't get my work done or I'm having difficulty doing my work, what I want to do is retreat into my home, make a little cocoon of blankets on my couch, wearing comfy pajamas, get a couple cats, a dog, it's my menagerie of pets, get some snacks, get a favorite show going on Netflix, and call it a day because I don't remember what I was supposed to do anyways. And isn't this just a little bit more comfortable? And I know some of you are probably thinking, retreating to that cocoon sounds amazing, and can I join you? Well, with the three animals, you probably won't fit, but I got another couch, so yeah, you can join me. We'll make a little blanket for it, like the cutaways. We'll just make my whole living room a place where people are feeling overwhelmed and then retreating. And I think what's happening is that there are some times in our life where we kind of struggling and because we're overwhelmed and then we retreat that we start to feel bad about a lot of things, about ourselves, about our ability to do work, and about our ability to be a good friend. And so today I wanted to talk about something you're like, oh geez, they say this all the time in romance. How can you ever expect someone to love you if you can't love yourself? And that's a different podcast, right? Like that's a romantic, let them handle it. I'm here talking about friendship. And I want to talk about how, yes, we can be good friends to ourselves because we can take the markers, the functions of friendship, the rules of friendship, and we can apply it to ourselves and maybe help sort of pull ourselves out of that cocoon and instead of retreating by ourselves that we find ourselves getting out with our friends and community and getting back to the things that we need to do and getting focused. So there are probably a lot of quotes that you've heard that reflect this idea. So it's not anything new. And maybe this is more of like an autobiography sort of podcast episode. It's kind of like, Elise, are you doing that because this is what you're going through? And it's like, yes, yes, I am because I can't think of anything else to do because I'm overwhelmed and I cannot be alone right? There's got to be, friends, please tell me I'm not alone. There's got to be others out there that need this pep talk just as much as I do. So that's what we're going to do. Quick pep talk. So yeah, you know these quotes. This isn't this isn't new. These are reminders. These are things that maybe we need to tattoo on our body, maybe right on our forehead so we can see it in the mirror every single day. Maybe we need to get shirts made. Maybe Best Forevers needs to make some swag so we can put that sticker right on our, our laptop or a water bottle to remember. Maybe we need to make a Pinterest board. Whatever we need to do, these are things we need to remember. And these are some people that we know well. Okay. Okay, so Eleanor Roosevelt, you've heard of her, right? (laughs) She said, quote, friendship with oneself is all important because without it, one cannot be friends with anyone else in the world, end quote. So Eleanor, no, she knows what's up. Or, well, she knew what's up. And she still knows what's up. Okay, we're going with it. So Maxwell Martz also has a quote, says, quote, if you make friends with yourself, you'll never be alone. So when we are struggling then there is that resource of turning to ourselves. So, I mean, I agree with this, but I also think that we need friends too. But sometimes we can't just depend on other people all the time. It can become toxic. It can be interdependent. We can become over-reliant. So it is good to figure out how we can be with ourselves. Oh, and then my girl, Diane Von Furstenberg, fashion, right? She said, quote, when a woman becomes her own best friend, life is easier. And friends, we need to become our best friends. That is the heart cry today. That is the battle cry. That is the chant of the week or the month or the year. That's our mantra, (laughs) 
<laughs> what are, this is what we need to live by. That our life is easier when we become our own best friend. So here's another one that you've probably heard quite often. Quote, you can be your own best friend or your own worst enemy. Choose wisely, end quote. And so, yes, maybe I'm being a little selfish here and going, I need to pull myself out of this cocoon because I don't want to be my own worst enemy. And so let's figure out a healthy way to be our best friend so that when we are struggling, and let's be real, these are things that we don't talk about openly enough, okay? Well, here it is. I have anxiety and depression, and my cup is empty, and there's no way I can help anyone else if my cup is empty, including myself. So let's choose wisely. And even though I might be deep in struggle, I can make that choice to say, I don't want to be my own worst enemy. All right, next one. If you wouldn't say it to your friend, don't say it to yourself. And snaps, can we get a preach? (laughs) And we'll talk about that a little bit more later because aren't we known to being a little bit mean to ourselves? Right. You know, upcoming in my dark side class, we'll be talking about teasing and bullying. And, you know, we're always like, oh, middle schoolers are the worst or coworkers and the gossip. But it's like sometimes are we like bullying ourselves? Like we need to like knock it off. And then finally, I mean, way back in the day, William Shakespeare was like, quote, be to yourself as you would to your friend, end quote. And that's what we're going to do today. We are going to talk about what we know about friendship and how we interact with other people and how we can use it for ourselves. So go William Shakespeare. (laughs) So on this podcast, I've talked a lot about different sort of characteristics or markers that would indicate a friendship. So in the last episode, Lauren joined me to talk about if honesty is the best policy. And she was talking about this activity she does in her class about a prototype and that like, what qualities do you want in a friend? And You know, I really liked how she talked about that activity and that there are prototypes and all our prototypes might be different, but in general, friendship research has found that there are certain markers that would say this is what friends do or this is what we look for in friends or this is the benefit of having friends. We also have talked a lot about friendship rules, right? Like what are the things we should follow? What are some of the rules that we violate? And although we might have our own personal rules, there still are probably some common ones that we might all agree with that a good friend or a friend would follow this rule, or there's no way that they would break this rule. And then there's just things that, you know, we need to think about that that we know in everyday life. And so I'm also going to talk about besides these markers and these rules, I'm going to talk about love languages, which has been something that has been Uh, something talked about throughout all the episodes of this podcast. And so here we go. This is Alisa's get your shit together eight item list of how you can take, this is the longest BuzzFeed list title, right? Alisa's get your shit together eight item list of things that you can take from friendship and apply to how you treat yourself. Um, let's not get shirts made of that because that's what, it might continue like on the back, right? We might need a better list name. So if you have a better list name, tweet at me, Insta me, Facebook me, get in that Facebook gr- uh, group at Best Forever's Pod, um, email me at bestforeverspod at gmail.com. And if you got a good list name for what we're about to go through, I'll send you some new swag because I haven't revealed it yet, but we got, let's see, one, two, three. Three, at least three new sticker designs that are in route to my hot little hands right now from Sticker Mule. And then I can send them to you and they'll be in your hot little hands. So help me out with a list name. Okay, here we go. So one of the things that we often think about when we think about friends is that they're fun. And so for ourselves, like sometimes we're just not having fun. And, you know, the job isn't always going to be fun. Work isn't always going to be fun. Doing laundry, cleaning toilets, doing the stuff around the house. Yeah, it's not fun. (laughs) But are there things that we can do to make it fun? Because friendship is about enjoyment. Friendship is about sharing activities together and about having fun. So when you are in a rut at work or you're just 
having difficulty even washing your dishes, which you don't want to see my sink right now, friends. Or maybe you do. So you can be like, oh, she's real. I'll take a picture and post it and be like, okay, I see what you, I see you. I see you and I relate to you. So one of the things that I did was I have a Bluetooth speaker and I have this um, wonderful uh, wall that I've been working on in my living room that's all Anna Green Gable stuff because, you know, on this podcast, we're all about kindred spirits. And I have a little sh- uh, shelf on there that holds all my Anne of Green Gables books. And so it's where I display it. And on top of that, I put a Bluetooth speaker. And so when I'm cleaning, then I can hear my podcast or my music um, all throughout the house. And so that makes it a little bit more fun. And <laughs> sometimes we just need to like, I don't know, maybe time ourselves, make it into a little game. Like, I bet I can get my dishes done in 10 minutes. But the idea is like, we have to find some enjoyment in life. What are the things that we enjoy? And it maybe it goes beyond the job and maybe it goes beyond doing chores. It's how else do we spend, spend our time? Because if we're going to work and then coming home and doing chores, where is the time for ourselves? So what activities do you do? And I've encouraged you for 90 some episodes about joining a book club or going to coffee with a friend. But I want to know what do you do with yourself for yourself that you enjoy? Some people might call this self-care. That's kind of a buzzy term. The more idea is like, what hobbies do you have? Do you enjoy what you do? And so I've always been someone who loves television, but call the newspapers friends because I'm decreasing my TV time, what? It's shocking. I bet if my mom and dad were listening right now, they'd both faint simultaneously. Like at the same, in sync, they would faint. You you turn the TV off? What? And so what I've been doing is finding things that I enjoy to do and then finding other ways to spend that time. So if I'm watching TV, then I can't read. And I really do enjoy reading. Um, If I'm watching TV, then I can't be necessarily up in my office where I have some of my crafting, like I used to knit, I used to sew, um, and notice the words used to because you get to a point where you're not doing those things anymore. And maybe it's something that you can add on and you can do with your friends and then you can do with yourself. So this past weekend, I took Finn, my new pup, over to meet my friend Sarah's dog, Bob. Um, They ignored each other. (laughs) And Finn ran around the backyard like a banshee, and he was just like, rah! And he was so excited. And But inside, my friend Sarah and Crystal, who have both been on the podcast, were painting pictures for Halloween. Like, they were doing this cat thing. Um, And you'll see it in social media because it's part of the Fall into Friends challenge as well. But I ended up staying, and we did some watercolor. We did watercolor of Hocus Pocus, um, which is a favorite Halloween movie. Oh, can we just say a favorite movie? And one of the things was I was like, that was a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed doing it. And so I went to Joanne's, and I got a like kind of a starter watercolor thing to see if I'd like it on my own. And so that's number one. We have to find fun. We have to have enjoyment. We have to have uh, activities and hobbies and things like that. And, you know, one of the things is Max Walmart said, if you make friends with yourself, you'll never be alone. And sometimes people don't want to do things alone. But at some point, having something that's just for ourselves can help us cope with the things that we're dealing with in life difficulties in relationships, in the workplace, with our anxiety, our to-do list, whatever the case is. And here's the thing. Like, I've never minded going to eat by myself. I've never minded to go to the movies by myself. So all those things are fine. Now, certainly I'm not going to see a movie at 7 o'clock on a Saturday night when it's date night. And I'm like the only one like, hey, everyone, how's it going? I'll, I'll see it around my schedule and how I see it. I'll go to sporting events by myself. And so for some of you, that could be really difficult. So instead of if that's not your thing and going, okay, these are the things that I enjoy. I'm going to go do them myself. And that's something that helps me. Then think about things that you can do yourself, like watercolor. I mean, that's just an example. There's a whole host of things you can do. And so in the Best Forevers pod, Facebook page. You can join that. There's two questions to answer. I'll add you in. I think it's a great little community and we can start generating some activities and hobbies and ways that we can make life fun. I think that would be helpful. So number two on my super long list title, (laughs) number two is, you know what friends do? They don't judge, they accept you, and they understand. Now think about your best friend. Do you judge them? Well, 
the rules of friendship thank you shannon but like generally we feel comfortable going to our friends because if we made mistakes we know they might help us instead of being critical of what we've done now if there's something where it's something where they truly need to be honest with us that's that's one thing but in general we can go and feel comfortable and know that we have them there and that they understand it but do we do the same for ourselves so I think number two is just truly about this idea of being gentle with ourselves. I think that's the quote, be gentle with yourself because you're doing the best you can. And so what are some of the things that we can do to be gentle with ourselves? Instead of saying things like, oh, I'm not worth it, I'm not enough, or I'm stupid, I'm an idiot, I made this mistake, like, what can we do to turn it around? Like, instead of saying, I'm sorry all the time to other people, right, you know, sometimes people say, stop saying sorry, we just get worked up, and we end up on these negative ends, and it's like, how can we change the language to positive? So it's like, I made a mistake at work today, but that'll be something that I'll remember and here's a way that I cannot make that mistake again, or I will not make that mistake again. Like, how can we say, you know, in the 10 years I worked at this job, making this one mistake, I think I'm doing pretty good. So chalk that up as, oh gosh, bad day, misunderstanding, whatever it is. We need to find ways in which to talk to ourselves more positively than negatively. And so another thing And this will lead into number three because, um, and so I'll just go into it to continue it. One of the number one things that friends do is talk, right? And so I'm not saying like, I mean, I know that many many of us are probably, we talk to ourselves. (laughs) And if we don't talk to ourselves aloud, we're like talking to ourselves in our head. You know, another thing that we do in friendship is listen. And so those are things where it's like, we need to listen to ourselves Um, where we're going through something, and if it's something rough, then again, it's being gentle. And generally, when we're talking and listening, and when we're out with other people, and we hear them, and they're talking, one of the friendship rules is to not talk bad about your friend. So if you're not going to talk bad about your friend, why are you going to talk bad about yourself? So that could be the negative talk, but it could also be how you talk about yourself around other people. And so I ha- I, I seriously have self-deprecating humor. I'm d- I mean, you're like, yeah, I know I've listened. I've heard you. <laughs> I've heard you before. Or if you're one of my students, you're like, yeah, I know. I've had your class for at least a day. <laughs> And so one of the things, though, is some of it's joking, but that is something that I could reflect on. Or if you're like me and do that self-deprecating or you complain or you put yourself down, again, let's get rid of that negative talk and make sort of a promise to ourself to talk more positively or to turn it around. Because, you know, I guess people don't like when you boast and things. So it's not like, I'm the greatest. It's more like, I made a mistake, but man, I learned a lot. Instead of, I made a mistake, I'm so stupid, I'm such an idiot, I can't believe I did that, what, how am I going to, how am I going to show my face, how am I going to, you know, there's, if you frame it differently, if you frame it positively, you're going to be able to approach it more positively, and I think that's important, and again, like, practice what you preach, Elisa, you know, but like I said, this is a pep talk to me, this is a pep talk to all of us who are going through this. This is a reminder. So it's like, listen to this when you need it. Maybe this is the episode that you mark as favorite somewhere, you tag it somewhere so you always have it because we need it. And maybe there's more you want to add, you can email me to do so. But we got to start thinking about being gentle with ourselves, which is number two. And number three, thinking about positive talk. And I think some of the things that we could do that I have done a little bit, but could practice a lot more myself is, you know, some people have mantras or affirmations and they meditate. And so that might be something to help with both of these. Being gentle to ourselves is taking that time to think through things, breathe through things. There's so many apps you can use to do that. But then also maybe, you know, I have a book of affirmations um, and it's, it's one of those things like maybe picking one that's like, something that you just say to yourself each day. It's something how you want to live by. I'm, I'm good enough. I'm worthy. I am, I am respected. I am val- whatever it is. And again, in the best forever's pod group, and I'll also make some visuals for social media. What's our affirmation going to be? And if you have one, share it. We can all help each other, but I think that can help us with both of that. 
All right. Okay. Number four. Now, Elisa. Yes, I'm talking to myself. Listen to this one. (laughs) So one of the rules of friendship is that you stand up for your friend, right? You defend them. Like how many of you, if your friend was, someone was trying to fight them, you take your earrings off, you put your hair up in a ponytail and you're like, oh, let's go. Or how many of you are just going to be like, no, no, that's not, you're just going to say something. You're going to pull your friend away. You're going to, you're going to do what you can to defend them and protect them. Well, we should defend ourselves and we should defend ourselves by making boundaries. Say at the beginning, at the top of the podcast, I said I was overwhelmed. That's because I I don't have boundaries. And so in this past week, I've started to make boundaries and having that realization and saying it to myself and saying it to other people, I said it to each of my students, all three of my classes. I posted it on Twitter. I talked to my parents. I've screen grabbed the tweet that I posted, sent it to some of my friends because I want them all to know that this is what I'm doing right now. And I'm setting boundaries for myself. And one of the things, and I mean, I just joked about this on a fatalities episode. I never say no. And no is a complete sentence, period, right? We can't do everything. We can't be everything to everyone. And sometimes when you, you're you successful in your jobs or in your life or with other people, then more people want more of you. And and in a lot of ways, that's a compliment, right? That means they're looking to you. They they want your assistance. They 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 want to be near you. But you still have to protect yourself because much of what I like I said, it's that if I have an empty cup, then I am no good for anyone, not even myself. And so if we set boundaries, we say no, and we start doing all these other things that we talked about, like being gentle with ourselves and adding some enjoyment into our life, then our cup is probably going to fill up or maybe it'll overrunneth, right, Shakespeare? It'll overrunneth. (laughs) So it is important. And so the question might be, as I think about it, you know, I need boundaries. So one of the things I did for example, is when I tried to make a boundary a couple of years ago is I was always on email. So I took email off my phone. That's a boundary. I would put in my syllabus, I don't check my email past five. If I happen to do so, you won the lottery for that day, so to speak, right? Um, but it's like that was one of my boundaries, right? If If I was asked for a recommendation letter, I had to have at least – two to three weeks. I prefer four to six weeks in in time, you know, those sorts of things. And those are work related, but those are some of the boundaries that I started to set. And one of my new favorites, um, I woke up one morning and I had a text message from one of my teaching assistants. And I was like, hey, didn't get it because my notifications go off at 1030 and they don't go back on until seven, like I, I 10 to seven, something like that. On your phone, you can turn off notifications. And so when I'm sleeping or as I'm getting ready for bed, I am not distracted by all the messages that I'm getting. And not that I would say that my TA is a distraction. It's just one of those things like that is a boundary, right? And she said, Oh, I knew you would get it at some point, and I sent her a gif of being like, it was fine because I was unbothered because I didn't get the notification, so it worked out great. It's still there. It didn't bother me. I was able to answer her question or respond to her at a time that was more convenient. She was able to send it to me so that she didn't forget. It all worked out fine, and now that's for me, that's a boundary I set, and I am loving it. And so I'm trying to think about other ways that I can use my phone to do things like that. And then yesterday, oh my goodness, friends, you probably know about this, but this was like, for me, mind blown. (laughs) One of my other TAs was like, you know, you can like set up your email. So messages go just right into folders. And I was like, say what now? Because uh, one of my roles on campus, I got 57 emails for it just one, like one morning. And I was like, this is too much. So I'm looking into that, but those are boundaries. Those are simple boundaries. You might have some bigger boundaries that you need to make. Tell me what your boundaries are, which ones you've had to make in your life. And again, maybe we can help each other. 
Okay. The next one is, so this is number five of the Lisa get your shit together list of all the things to be better friends to herself. One of the things that friends do is they're very supportive and encouraging. And so this might go beyond like the enjoyment and not having negative talk and setting your boundaries. But then it's also like, what are your goals? What are the things you want to do? What are the things that can help you make things happen? And so, you know, is it making a list of your goals and putting it where you can see? Is it putting sticky notes on your mirror in the bathroom? Is it um, sending yourself a message? Is it, you know, I don't know, a reminder on your phone that's like, you're doing amazing, sweetie. Like, you know, other people support and encourage us, but we could also do it for ourselves. We can be our own cheerleaders. And so what are some of the things that we can do to be sure that we support what we want to do and encourage ourselves so that we can maintain it. Is it, so my friend Crystal and I, and and I'm sure some of her other friends are doing this, but I got the idea from her, but, um, there is, I believe it's hashtag last 90 days on Instagram and it's a journal to focus on the last 90 days of the year because we're often so concerned about the new year and going into the new year and new year's resolutions. But If you think about it, the last three months are hard because you have all the holidays and if you're on academics, you have final exams and there's just a lot of pressure. And if you live in places like I do where the weather gets worse, that it's like, yeah, let's end the year strong and then think about how to start the year strong. And so something like that, I think, is supporting myself, encouraging myself. Then I get emails from them. I can go on Instagram and see what other people are doing. And I can come up with ways. I can have a Pinterest board of encouragements. I can have things on my phone. I can find a quote or an image online and make it my lock screen on my phone. Uh, what do you do to support and encourage yourself? So you notice after every single item, I'm like, what do you do? Because the things I do might help me, but they might not help someone else. But the other thing is there are probably some of you out there who have gems, just just nuggets of information that will change people's worlds. It could be something so small like finding out that your email can be filtered, right? So, <laughs> so... Please share. This is, I'm encouraging you to tell us what you do to encourage yourself so then we can encourage our own selves, right? See how it works. <laughs> Number six, and this is based off the last episode with Lauren, is honesty the best policy. As individuals, we participate in what we like to call self-deception, and I talk about this in my lying and deception class, and a lot of times it might be expected that we are honest with our friends, and therefore we should be honest with ourselves. And some of the things that we we might do in self-deception is something like, well, I ran two miles today, so I can totally get Qdoba for dinner, (laughs) or I was so good today, I'm going to be bad tomorrow, like food-wise or whatever the case is. And so maybe being honest with ourselves, it's like instead of rationalizing, you know, behaviors that could be bad, that can get us off track, that can get us back in the rut, it can get us back in the cocoon on the couch. And here's the thing. Being in a cocoon on the couch is sometimes precisely what we need. But if we're doing it every day or if it's like, well, I walked a mile so then I can eat Qdoba every day, it's – my dad says this all the time and I know he's not the person who said this quote, but I just can hear him saying it now. Everything in moderation, including moderation. So we have to be honest with ourselves, right? Are we rationalizing? Are we in denial? Are we – you know, minimizing the things that we're going through and maybe doing journaling or doing some sort of goal assessment and reevaluation, some reflections, meditation. Maybe we can truly look at the things that we need to know most, even if it might hurt, so that we can help pull ourselves out of whatever struggle we might be going through. And again, this isn't because we have to do everything alone. We do have friends. We do have partners. We do have family. We have children. We have therapists. We have we have cousins. We have coworkers. We have neighbors. We have all these people. But sometimes if we can start with ourselves, not only can we be better for ourselves, but we can be better for all those people. So I'm not encouraging us all to go onto an island and get rid of all our friends. I'm just saying maybe if we're a little bit honest with ourselves, then when we turn to our friends for social support, for example, 
and we're honest about what we need to work on, then they can give us more specific or appropriate advice, or they can support us in a way that we truly need, not in the way that we need because we are kidding ourselves. Number seven of Elisa's Get Your Shit Together list is from the Huffington Post, and I like this. We want the best for our friends, and you know what? We deserve the best too. So this might encompass a lot of the things that we're talking about here is being honest about what's best for us, being supportive and encouraging ourselves, setting boundaries so we can have the best for ourselves. It's having positive talk so we can be best for ourselves and that we're accepting when things don't go right, even when we're working towards the best for ourselves and that having the best and being the best and wanting the best is something that along the way is going to be enjoyable and being our best is going to be the best for us. And so so maybe these last two sort of encompass everything else. And I really like that because what is the best for you? What is the best you want for yourself? What is the best you want for your friends? Think about that. What do you want for your friends? And think about, are those the same things you want for you? And what are you doing to be sure that your friends are, are getting the best, but more importantly, so that you are getting the best, right? And that can go back to number six and being honest. These are all connected. I love when everything just works together. It's amazing. (laughs) All right. And number eight, bring out the best of you. This is also from the Huffington Post, that when we're with our friends, they bring out the best. And so we want to bring out the best of ourselves as well. And so this might consider, you might think about some reflection that you have about what you like about yourself best when you're with other people. And then what you can do for yourself is instead of, you know, focusing on the negative, it's like, these are the things that I would like to be sure that I am being my best every single day. Like when I'm with my friend, I feel like I'm very kind. And that's something that I want to do and be whether I'm with my friend or not. And, and then you could say, you know, when I'm with my friend, I'm not like this. And maybe that's something, you know, because we all, we're human. We got some flaws. We got some things we can work on. There's things that we can improve. And so maybe we can think about bringing out the best, but then it can also minimize the things that can be a little bit mm, problematic for us or we think might uh, get in the way of being our best or um, being good to ourselves or enjoying ourselves. Now, I like to make the point here that obviously we go through things that are very difficult, in some cases uh, traumatic, and it's going to take some time, and it's uh, we see therapists, we might be on meds, we might, there's a whole host of things that we can do, we're in support groups, and this is not any way meant to like make light or to neglect or ignore any of those things or saying that this is the only way is like if you do these eight things or if you're a good friend to yourself, then everything is going to be okay. This is a strategy, a way of thinking, maybe a way of living that can help us, but it's not something to do all by itself. Like, so I want to do these things. This is why I'm doing this episode because I want to remind myself. I want to get myself ready to go and moving in life in a different way. And you know what? Still going to see my therapist on Monday. See you soon, girl. (laughs) I still take my meds every night. I still interact with my friends. I still do, you know, all these other things. And so it's not a one tactic approach to a struggle. But I don't think we often talk about the things that we know and do about friendship, how it can help us personally. And so there's one last thing that I think that we can consider, um, and that is love languages. And these are love languages. These are things that we might communicate to our friends and our family members and definitely romantic partners about the things that sort of fill our cup the most when it comes from someone else. And again, you know, we might get these things from people and people might, you know, help us with this, but maybe we can also help ourselves. So there are five. Uh, love languages, and we probably score highly on one or two of them. Some people might score high on all of them. Some people might score low on them. Um, So it might just be like what reflects you. And so in show notes, I'll have a link to the survey, and then you can figure out your love language. Although I have a feeling as we talk about them, you're going to be like, that sounds like me. (laughs) Okay. 
So the first one, and I think is most reflective of what we talked so far. One love language is words of affirmation, meaning that we like to hear those words from other people. So we like to have the talks we like to do and hear th- things from other people. And so that helps our friendships and our romantic relationship. But this goes back to talking positively to ourselves and about ourselves. Okay. So I, I think I'm someone that is a words of affirmation. Another one is touch. So people like hugs, um, you know, they appreciate affection. And so this one might be a little bit harder in terms of for ourselves, but it could be something like, what are the things that can help with affection? Um, is it wearing, uh, I mean, and some of you might be like, you're really you're really stretching it here. Maybe it's wearing cozy socks. Maybe it's having a weighted blanket. Maybe it is going for a massage. Maybe it's, uh, you know, taking a bath. Maybe it's, um, using, you know, lotion. You know, I have a lotion that's like, um, eucalyptus and tangerine. It's like stress-free. So doing that makes my hand, it feels like a hand massage. And then I get those smells. Um, so that might be something. The third one is gifts. And so some people love to get things from people, whether it's big or small. And sometimes, okay, this doesn't always work in our budget, but maybe one of the things that we can do for ourselves is maybe go buy a new book or nail polish or a new sticker for a water bottle or just something small or maybe because you've done all these amazing things on Elisa's list that you feel like that you're like, okay, if I do these things for the next week, then I'm going to go get a pedicure or I'm going to uh, splurge and buy a new outfit. You know, whatever the case is, sometimes, uh, what do they call it? Like retail therapy. You just want to be careful because sometimes our checking account and our credit cards don't agree. <laughs> The next one is service, and that's where that might be like volunteering or doing favors. And so what favors can you do for yourself? Is there something that you can do that makes your life easier or more efficient? Or maybe as part of your reflection and thinking about yourself, it it is going to donate your time or donate money or whatever the case is. But I do like this idea of service to ourself. And sometimes even the smallest change can free up so much time. And one of the examples that I'll say is that I tried shift for a month. I forgot about it. So my yearly (laughs) fee went through. So I have shipped for another year, but I love it. It frees up so much time. I just put on my phone, do, 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 do. This is what I want. And then they text me, we're out of this. Do you want some of this? Sure. And then they just, sometimes I don't even want to open the door and talk to them. I'll be like, can you just leave it on the porch? (laughs) And they do. And it's amazing. And it frees time. And uh, to me, going to the grocery store is sometimes stressful. And I feel like, although I love my grocery store, Meyer, I always feel like, when I get in line, I swear to God, it's aisle 13. It's probably the number. But I'm like, this is it. This is what's going to kill me, being in this line for the next 40 minutes. <laughs> and maybe that's how we feel in stores. Like, the lines are always so long. And so a service to myself is saying, you know what? I can afford that. I'm going to do that. And it just has made my life better. And then the final one is something that has gone into what we've talked about here, and that's having quality time for herself whatever that might be. I know when people talk about self-care, it's like, take a bath. But maybe, as I found out this past week, bathtubs and small bathrooms are small. (laughs) And maybe the last time I took a bath when I was seven, I fit in the bathtub a little bit differently. (laughs) So maybe quality time is doing that watercoloring that I got so I can try that out. But again, whatever works for you. And we want to generate that list because maybe it'll spark something for someone else. But the love languages, we often think about helping other people or serving other people or talking and spending time with other people. But it can also be applied to ourselves because sometimes we need to be our own best friend. So Thanks for listening to my own pep talk. I hope it was helpful to you. And I want to hear everything because that is something I I want the best for me. I want the best for you. And I think that we all have ideas that we can share and, and we can all try things out. And maybe we can just, we can be good friends to each other 
to help us be good friends to ourselves. I like that. So right now, friends, we got a couple things going on for Best Forevers. The first thing is it's the Fall into Friends Challenge. And if you do things with your friends that are fall-like, you go to Apple Cider Mill, you go pick pumpkins, you go to a spooky haunted house, you have Hocus Pocus Night, whatever it is, you do that with a friend, you take a picture, and you hashtag Fall into Friends at Best Forevers Pod on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, or you email me at Best Forever's Pod, you are going to be put in the running for some awesome fall prizes. Everyone who does it will get a Fall into Friends swag sticker. And then I have the best blankets ever. I have the best socks ever. I have a cool fall mug. I have a spooky Jason from Friday the 13th pen. I have all these cool things that will be posted online. And the more you do, um, you'll be put in the running for all these prizes. So although we're talking about ourselves today, it's still a good idea to be sure that we don't fall out of our friendships. Let's fall into our friendships. Number two, y'all, we're almost at 100 episodes and I just celebrated on September 30th my two-year podiversary. So for that, I want to do a AMA, Ask Me Anything. You can ask me about podcasting. You can ask me about friendship. You can ask me about anything related to relationships or communication. Things I talk about in here teaching, family, cats, dog, uh, TV, life, um, just fun, silly questions. You can ask me anything. Please send me those questions at any of the social media sites at Best Forever's Pod or at bestforeverspod at gmail.com. And then finally, y'all, it's spooky season. Yes, it is. It's Halloween season. And last year, I was very proud of myself that I came up with ghosting as a topic for friendship for Halloween because it's a spooky topic. So my spooky topic this year is it's a time to vent, friends, and I want you to confess. I want you to confess your scariest friendship moments. I want you to send in confessions, and I will post because it, it they will be all read anonymously. So if you're comfortable messaging them to me on you know DM on any of the social media sites, please do, or on email. But I'm going to post a link to an online space where you can write it without putting your name And that will be the Halloween episode. I'm going to read scary friendship confessions. That's my spooky voice. I hope that didn't scare you away. (laughs) But friends, thank you so much. Thanks for listening. I feel better already just talking about all this. And I hope you feel better too. And when I'm in a rut, I hope that I remember everything that I've said here and everything that I learned from you. Um, based on your response to this episode. And so until next time, friends, consider how you can be a good friend to yourself because without our friends, who would we be? Thanks for listening to Best Forevers. If you like what you hear, be sure to subscribe, rate, review, and of course, share with a friend. Please be sure to follow Best Forevers on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Best Forevers Pod. And I'm at Dr. Lisa Lucas on Twitter. You can always find the podcast webpage for more information at bestforeverspod.com and share your stories of friendship by emailing me at bestforeverspod at gmail.com. And if you'd like to support the movement to love on our friends more, check out the podcast on patreon.com forward slash bestforeverspod. Now friends, check out this recommended podcast that you must get in your ear holes immediately.